right, Pastor Ron, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, I mean, the book's talked a lot about uh, life, a lot about death. In chapter 9, in light of the uncertainty of this life, the preacher, the sage, uh, promotes living life to the fullest. And In other words, he talks about one's eating, drinking, working, and relationships. How is this exhortation different than a well-known atheist creed? You have exactly one life in which to do everything you'll ever do. Act accordingly. Or that is the sage saying the same thing the atheist creed is saying, or how similar that, That's so interesting because in some ways the Christian and the atheist at that point would live similarly in sure. the sense that we this is the only life not that we'll ever have, but the only life we'll have here. Right. So it, so the preacher is trying to show the urgency of using life and living life and enjoying and life uh, now. So in, in some ways, you know, unless there were immoral ways, you know, and lots of atheists are moral in some level, sure. and uh, just in a civil righteousness level, and so, uh, you know, they might not look a lot different in the, in the urgency of the time. We, there's much urgency talked about in the preacher's mind. We must do this now, and uh, the, and he gets to that in chapter um, eleven, uh, latter part of chapter eleven, that you know. While you're young, why why you have the time, uh, uh, serve the Lord, rejoice in things, and remember Him. Uh, so, uh, in some ways, it might not look a lot differently, but it certainly will look a lot differently as far as uh, uh, how, why we're living and and uh, uh, that we're we're as Christians, we we're living now for the glory of God and not for the glory of ourselves. And, mm -hmm. And we're serving others uh, because Christ has served us, mm. and uh, uh, so there'll be the motivation will be quite different than the atheist, mm. but the actual living of life and enjoying life might uh, be very similar at times. Eating, yeah. drinking, you know, yeah. living, enjoying, the, uh, living the, it up. <laughs> from our perspective, enjoying creation, uh, and not you know not in the sense of that's the only thing we do or that sure. uh, it's you know we take scripture interpret it with scripture uh, it's it's but that we it's not wrong to enjoy God's good creation and, it's a big uh, part of our day to day right yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not somehow unspiritual or less than Christian that, you know we have these over uh, uh, overtones of of, of 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 monasticism and you know that 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 kind of get into us, and we can't really enjoy the creation, or somehow it's wrong for us to do that. That's not true at all. And I think Ecclesiastes comes back, brings us back to that. And Paul talks about that in First Timothy chapter four and whatnot. Mm -hmm. but mentions uh, enjoying and receiving things uh, with the word and prayer, and uh, that these are good gifts from God. And they're not unspiritual, but very spiritual to receive them. And it'd be unspiritual to not receive them with thanksgiving or to enjoy them right. as God would have us. Right. Yeah, absolutely.